Um, hi everyone, welcome to Morse code. Today, we are solving the valid anagram problem from lit code. The problem is a great way to practice working with characters, uh, mainly character frequency and, you know, efficient algorithm generally. Whether you're preparing for a coding interview or you're just building your skill, this tutorial will help you, you know, tackle the problem with confidence. Let's say the problem, the problem statement is simple. You you know, given two strings, the uh, goal is to determine if E is an agra anagram of S, right? And false, you know, you just need to return false if it's not, right? So what is an anagram, right? An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letter of another, you know, using all original letters exactly once. So say, for example, uh, sorry, let me see the last there. Yeah. So, uh, R, will, okay, let's say that, right, is an anagram, anagram of R, for example, because you would see we have R, A, T, exactly once, right? So, no matter how long the, no matter how long the word is, I just need to check if by rearranging. So, um, they will be the same, right? So, uh, for for two words to be an anagram right they need to have the same length right if they don't have the same length then there's like they are not anagrams right also have to like contain the same characters and at the same frequency so for example if i add maybe like two a's it's, it's not going to be an anagram of t because now we have a twice and we have a just once in the other character Right. So there, there's, there's, there's like a number of approach we could use to solve. First approach involves like sorting the string and comparing the sorted version. Obviously, before you sort, right, you, you want to check if they have the same length. I mean, you don't want to like, uh, so you don't want to, if they have different lengths, then they are definitely not our anagrams, right? So to do that, we could say length of X, um, if length of S, not equals um, length of then we want to say return false right in that situation so you don't need to like do anything so this method it's uh, yeah i would get to it so like we could say sorted of s equals equals sorted of t so this is quite like straightforward. The issue with this is an um, interview like scenarios, right? That we could we could run it and just to be sure. And uh meet it as well. So you see that it's actually accepted. But like in interview scenarios, firstly, maybe we should discuss about the time complexity before you know saying if we should if one should use this in interview settings, right? So time complexity for this is n log n. Uh, you know, if you are quite familiar with sorting in programming, generally it's mostly n of n log n, right? And the space complexity of this is O of n, right? Because we need uh, we need to like store the sorted screen. That thing. Sorry about that. Yeah, that works. But like in interview settings, so just to to explain better. Right. In interview settings, this might not be the way to go, right? Because it looks too simple, you know, too <laughs> straightforward. And yeah, the interviewer may request that you go, you know, deep into it. So like, for example, let's say, let's use this anagram. Let's use these two examples just so to show you like a visual um, explanation of it. So sorting S would give us um, something like this S is going to now become, you know, it becomes like a string, it becomes a string, A, 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 G, M, N, R, when you sort. So when you sort anagram, you have that, right? And when you sort T as well, you have, you get the same, right? So, and here on this line, what you're just doing is to check if they're both the same. If they're not, then you want to return false. So the second approach, which is like using a hash map, I would say it is. So yeah, the second approach is using a hash map, right? So what what we use a, 
a hash map to do is to like count the frequency of each character in the string instead of relying on you know python you, you could you could do that using python on top but i'm going to be coding it out so that you see how it works right so we'll build the hash map manually for like you know greater control and flexibility and also like in interview settings so so you show the interview interviewer that you know exactly what you're doing so uh, the same thing right so uh, what are the things we want to do to achieve this right so we want to create a dictionary to you know count the character so like whilst you know you loop over the character you you want to count you know, say for example i have anagram right so let's copy this again say we have so we have anagram so i want to loop over the string and count you know so by the time you get to the end of the string you have like um a dictionary say for example just for the a so you'd have like uh maybe like a dictionary that shows this like we have like string a appears three times in n you know string string n appear once so and so on and so forth like so you'd have this kind of dictionary at the end of the string right so um, all you need to do is just like you know subtract character counts using the second string which is t right so yeah i'll, I'll show you how to do that all right so let's let's get started so firstly the addition applies if the length of the string are different then it's apparent that they're not anagrams right so because length of um, t so then you want to return false, right? So we could create the dictionary we spoke about. We could call it share, maybe share count because an empty dictionary, right? So now, so we want to loop about the string S, right? So, so for, let's say share in S, what do you want to do? We want to say, uh, the Share count, you know, which is a dictionary. Right? Share count of the character equals uh, count dot get share comma zero. So why are we using dot get share? Because you know, so what we are trying to do is we are looping over the string s, right? And whenever we loop, we want to check if um, the character, you know, for char in character. So if I'm on A, you know, on the first pass, right, I want to check if A is already in the dictionary, but um, the dictionary is empty, right? So I want to say char.get, right? So if I try to get A from this dictionary, if I'm using like a normal, if I don't use get, right, trying to get A from, an, from a dictionary where A doesn't exist, right, will throw an error. So we don't want that. So this would, you know, using get with the char and zero, what's what that all that would do is to ensure that if you don't find a in the dictionary, then you return zero, right? So when we return zero, just we just want to add one, right? So at, in the first pass, right, this char dictionary would be something like this, right? Char dictionary would be like something like a, you know, we we'll try to get a get zero then we add one to it right so then the dictionary at this point would look something like this a then it should be one right so when we get to n it's you know does the same for n as well right so it does the same for n and when we get to a right so it this line will try to get a at this point, it gets one, right? So then it adds one to it. So now it that would be two. So and that's how we do it to the end of the. Yeah, and that's gonna do the same for all the. All the character in the string. So after doing that, what we wanna do is we wanna subtract character counts using t, right? So we'd say for sure in t. So if that not 
in share accounts right so if you don't have the character in share accounts then what do you what does, does that mean that means that so say for example say t now is like let's say c is a na gram right firstly we know okay at this point let's say we didn't catch it let's say maybe they have the same okay let's say let me remove a they have the same length right because if they have different lengths then this would have returned like false but let's say they have same length right but there's one character that is different right so that's what we're checking here so z not being in this in this dictionary at the end of the you know the computation here that means they are not anagrams right so if you know chat is not in and we want to say return i want to return false right so that's the first check and now you know now would we'll say uh, underscore counts minus equals one so what we are doing is looping looping over the string of the sec over the second string we first like checked if uh, there's a character in the string that we don't have in the dictionary right you know so like while we are looping we check oh this current character is it in the dictionary if not if it is if it is not then we want to return false right and uh, if it is then we want to like subtract it from this so at that point let's say a ended up being three and the character we're looking at is a so a now becomes like two right so that's what they're doing what we are doing there so um, if you know when you get to the if the, if the chart count sorry chart count of the character is less than zero right what if the chart count is less than zero then what it means is let's say for example um we have maybe let's say instead of the z we have m all right so now m here is going to be one m for the first character is going to be one but m for the second character will be two right two minus one is minus one right so when you get like minus one then you definitely know oh yeah they're not anagrams right we know for sure they're not anagrams because that means um the character the one we're checking has more occurrence in c than in s right so um so and if we get to the end of the end of the loop you know then we want to check if everything you know every so what we expect by the end of the the loop right all the characters in the all the characters in the string should be zero like it should all be zero if one of them is not zero then they are definitely not anagrams as well so yeah so i could now say return all counts equals equals zero or counts in so it's just like um account values right so yeah so we could do um, this just to be sure oh sorry what's that oh sorry so yeah i'm trying to i need to like in this the character right sorry uh, that should fix the issue nice and uh, submit that yeah that works as expected right so uh, yeah so just to like go over what we did again all right so here we check the length of s and length of t on this line if they're not equal they want to like give false then we want to loop over the string s right you just have count dictionary right then now loop over you know string t just to like reconcile right to see if you know there's a character in t that is not in s then we return false or if you know then we keep subtracting from the counts we had and at the end of the loop we just want to return we want to check if all the values in the dictionary is zero if one of them is one then we definitely know they are not anagrams and this would return false right 
Um, the time complexity for this is O of N, uh, O of N, which is, yeah, which is, which is not bad. And, you know, so let's, I think generally when I work on some of these questions, I try to test cases. What about if the strings are empty, right? What if the strings are empty? What do we, what happens, right? So let's, let's test this edge case. Let's say strings are empty. Right. Just to be sure, right? Now, obviously. Okay. So I think they don't allow us to, it's an edge case, but maybe it's not something we want to consider here, right? but at least we've been able to get to the end of it. Right. Um, so one thing to notice this problem is, isn't just theoretical. It has, um, practical uses, right? For example, in spell checkers, right? If you want to verify rearrangement of words. So I think, uh, engines use them, you know, grouping similar queries or keywords. And it has very, like, it's really used in cryptography as well. You know, when we want to validate the arranged keys or tokens in security systems, right? So, uh, yeah. so I think that's today we've explored two solutions for the vanilla diagram. We explored the sorting, also the hash map, right? The hash map solution is more efficient for larger imputes. But the sorting is like a simple, like simple to implement, right? Maybe you don't want to use it in interview settings because it's it requires you to rely on the imputes like sorted function and Python, which I'm not sure all interviewers will be happy with. Uh, yeah. So, and that's it for today. If you found this, this video helpful, please like, share, subscribe for more algorithm tutorials. Drop a comment if you would, you know, if your preferred solution or so your preferred solution or problem you'd like me to solve next. Thank you.